Well, good morning, Alex. It's uh, 5 a.m. Yeah, it's and way we, too early. <laughs> yeah, we've had four days of intense um, documentation of the Kalamazoo River. Yeah, running uh, through bush and swamp. <laughs> yeah. And it's been heart-wrenching, too. We've met, met a lot of people that yeah. um, are sick. And um, then, of course, those fish right behind you uh, with tumors and just completely black. Um, yeah, I wouldn't be eating them, but... Yeah, yeah. That it's sad, and then, and I don't know what to do about it. And I'm so thankful that you drove down here from Canada to spend your own time, and your own money, and um, you have you really gave me hope, because there's people around the country that really need to see these videos. They need to know what's going on. And every time a reporter comes here, or I do a radio show, or I get a film crew to come here, it's more people that's going to see the truth. Mm -hmm. Why did you come here? I thought it would be a good idea to come down and find out uh, basically how it impacted the communities here because it's the same thing is going to happen on in Ontario. It's not a question of if but when. Well, I've been doing this two and a half years now mm -hmm. and almost every single day of that time I've been working on this either through radio shows or making videos or gathering footage. Um, I've been up and down that river a thousand times. Mm -hmm. and just to try to find that oil that's buried. Oil. John has me trudging through another swamp. Um, he says there's lots of oil. And we're gonna have a look at that right now. What do you think after just four days of footage? Well, um, the people here are really nice. That's the first thing that I found out. Um, Seems like uh, Enbridge has a lot of contempt for some of the communities, especially the poor communities. Um, didn't bother to evacuate the people. Didn't seem to really uh, bother even contacting them or, or warning them. There's a lot of little children. Um, and the ones that they did try to buy off, uh, the, the lowest number that I heard was for $210. Um, it, it's just a disgrace how some of these people were treated, especially the communities around um, Angel Bridge. I felt really bad. Uh, they've basically been forgotten about, like just ignored. Well, they won't eat. They won't eat these particular fish, but they've been eating them up to this point. So it's just well, the, yeah, you, they're still contaminated. They're just eating fish that they that hasn't actually got the tumor yet, but inside their bodies are contaminated. Yeah. These communities are so poor, that's what they rely on for, as a source of food. Well, Enbridge lied at first to our entire community saying it was a different type of oil, a less toxic oil. Because well, what we just found out the other day and when we were talking to that business owner, which I thought was really interesting timing. Like that. Couldn't, you, we couldn't have timed that better, actually. Well, I mean, it's, it's, I, I can't believe even after it came out that it's still bit, uh, what we call tar sands from the tar sand pits in Canada. Well, they're still lying to people. Yeah, so. they're still lying to people. Yeah. Trying and saying there's no chemicals in it. Um, I have their own document that says it's got dozens of, of super highly toxic chemicals in it. Yeah, but I guess the average person isn't going to read into it that much. Uh, spoke to that business owner that owns the um, the plant shop or whatever, and uh, as we we're packing up to leave. Enbridge happened to call this guy, um, so we fired a few questions oil, with the camera. That's on our still rolling actually, while he was talking and to the, in the uh, Enbridge uh, there are a lot of poor people person, and they people. said, "No, no, no. There's there's no chemicals. It's just regular crude, um, which is it's not the case. Uh, they they lied to that man. Um, Ten people died. Two of them uh, within the first month after the spill. None of these people were evacuated. The two guys." Two of the men that died were just in their 40s. With the information that you're putting out there, like more people are rightfully, I think, jumping on board in class action lawsuits against Enbridge for essentially putting people at risk and, and lying to them about it to cover their own ass. So what do you think? What's your personal opinion on the damage I've caused Enbridge um, financially from the extra cleaning up, the lawsuits, the, the PR? It's warranted all the criticism that you're bringing on Enbridge. They deserve every bit of it and much more because they do this, this similar things in other communities and they don't have a John 
Balambo and all these other places where there's spills. You know, with the cost of redigging up Talmadge Creek and the redredging of the river, and then you look at all the new people that are joining class action lawsuits, the PR, the potential damage to, I guess, the Northern Gateway project. I'm going to use the footage that I got to go against Enbridge's uh, reversal of Line 9 through to, um, through Ontario. Um, it would be hard to put a price tag on it, like a billion dollars. I mean, it could be a lot more. I mean, who, who knows, really? I mean, but... A billion dollars. Uh, easy, I guess, really. I mean... What do you think my motivation is? I mean, you've met me, you've talked to me, you've seen what I'm doing. Um, what's your opinion on me? Um, well, I think you're, you know, you're gutsy. You're really hanging it out there in your own community. If you've been through uh, quite a bit just to tell people what's going on and you're making some very powerful people very angry. Um, at great personal risk to yourself. I worry you're going to be, you know, with a pair of concrete shoes in the bottom of a river somewhere. Um, <clears throat> I think you believe in what you're doing and you're trying to help your community, so I commend you for that.